With over 500,000 trees and shrubs already planted and growing, it's easy to forget you are in the city. We don't just say, we do. It's the Stain City Way. Welcome to SABC3. We live you with Real Talk with Anele, where the stage is yours. So every year has got its buzzword on how you can make money, how you can be a property owner. The buzzword for 2018 is clearly property stock falls. Yes, property stock falls. Today on the show, we find out about the pros, the cons, how do you get in, how do you get out if you need to, and how much money are you going to need? How do you know if you're not being taken for a ride? Sit tight, because later on in the show, we have a whole host of experts to talk about investing in residential and commercial properties using crowdfunding. Uh, so it was also a big weekend for our film and television industry. The 12th annual South African Film and Television Awards were held at Sun City. Phil, Phil Mpela, our entertainment blogger, is here and he has got all the details. Okay, is it a... Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you so strict? No, because you're talking about property owners and then we come to the broke people. <laughs> oh, the entertainers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're all in here. Yes. Okay, okay. but wait. With the Sefters, mm -hmm. Sefters 12, is it a thumbs up or is it a thumbs down from you? You know what? A lot of people are going to kill me for this, but I think it's a thumbs up. You know, given where we come from to where we yeah. are right now, I think there's a lot to be, you know, optimistic about. The show wasn't as bad as the previous years so i'd say it's a thumbs up i went to the ones last year and mm -hmm. i thought that show was amazing what's wrong <laughs> that show was a mess <laughs> okay look clearly i'm, I'm yeah. not difficult to Listen, please every year we complain about the same thing we complain about the sound what's we complain sound? about the people that either people don't rehearse before they come on stage to present or there's something that goes on like there's always these ridiculous glitches that could easily be uh -huh. fixed by just paying attention and people rehearsing uh -huh. and then the other issue that i always have every year is politicians giving long speeches in between which just dumpens the whole thing and whatever this year we had none of that uh, we had very few glitches sound issues were there but i can tell you this sitting at home watching on television yeah i didn't feel it but uh, people who are in science city saying that are saying that in the auditorium there was an issue with with sound but us watching it from home we didn't get that I felt like the stage was a little smaller this year. Yeah, look, um, yes, and I understand why that is. In shooting, because there were very few celebrities there, uh, yeah, there were very few known faces. Why so, is that? Um, I think because the glamour of the softers has eroded in, in some way. Um, and the other thing is that uh, the resources are limited. So oh. those days of getting invitations with accommodation and transport <laughs> are, are over. so gone. <laughs> All right. so, so a lot of people who were not invited, so maybe when they were planning to shoot the thing, they had that in mind that if you keep it smaller, you mean you work in mm. television, you know that if you keep mm. it smaller, you're able to cheat mm. certain things. Okay, and yeah. also the, the, the celebrities, were, they were naturally nominated and yes. people weren't just going. Exactly. Uh, you know, to have a night at the Oscars, darling, yeah. there wasn't that. Yeah. Okay. Which, which, which for me, look, uh, I watched the red carpet, for instance. The 30, 30 minutes of, of the show was the red carpet moment and whatever, right? Was it hosted by? It was hosted by Ururi and uh, Kuli Roberts. They did a phenomenal job. I'm not going to, you know, dog them for that. However, missing at home watching this, when they were saying that there's a red carpet preempting the thingy, the, the actual ceremony, I'm expecting beautiful girls. I'm expecting uh, uh, questions to the nominees and stuff like that. And there were stuff like that. Nomzama looked amazing. Yeah. Uh, However, Valente looked amazing. Looked amazing. However, we never got to see those interviews and got to see those people being interviewed on air because what they did is that during that 30 minutes, they spent most of their time interviewing CEOs and all of that. And I'm like, what are we doing? Phil, sorry, you can't win all the time. You yeah. don't want them to be on stage giving tedious speeches. Yes. You don't want them on the red carpet. They're putting money into it. Let me tell you where I want them. Let me tell you where I want them. The SABC or the NAVF should have a sister show that would air on a Thursday, a special, where they can call it uh, Build Up to the Softers. Okay. And then have those speeches there. Because, believe you me, if you are telling me that this is a red carpet moment, <laughs> 
I tune in, I want to see beautiful clothes. I want more I want <laughs> yes. to see. Do you know I what I mean? I don't want I to want see you all of McDonald's sitting there telling me about <laughs> how much money he paid <laughs> okay. to be there. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, I hear it. You're not yeah. loving it. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> loving it. <laughs> All right, let's talk about, uh, there was, apparently there was a Serafina reincarnation. Yeah, a uh, beautiful moment. It was a bit spoiled because of the timing. The presenters didn't time their jokes right, so there was a bit of a timing moment there before Liliti came out. But you know what? Uh, she made it work. She came out wearing the Mandela suit and made that awesome speech, and the whole house just, you know, uh, erupted. Yeah. And, you know, it's moments like that for me as a, as, as a TV fan. For me, as, because I'm a viewer first. I yeah. always tell people that, that, you know what? I'm a fan of the industry first, and I'm a viewer first. Yeah. before I'm anything else. So yeah. when I see moments like that, I'm like, yes, that's a TV moment. And I know that a lot of people watching would appreciate that. Um, let's discuss the host. Yeah. Um, the host, look, Tando Tabete, she's proven that she's a competent yeah. uh, 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 host. Fed Joe, you can never go wrong with Fed yeah. Joe. I mean, How like, are they together? Um, Honestly, I like the chemistry between Tando and uh, Katlejo. Yeah. This time around, the, the chemistry for me didn't work, just for me, but I saw Fejo was trending. Uh, so I don't know. For me, the chemistry didn't work. I wish they'd, they'd paired uh, Tando with somebody else. Because you see, Fejo is like so easy. Do you understand? They, 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 they're such big personalities yeah. that when you uh, pair them with somebody who's a little, you know, more quieter than they are, the balance is kind of like, you know, but perhaps Katlejo isn't risque enough and Fejo is. Exactly. You know, look, like, like I'm saying, it's a, it's a matter of pairing people, pairing yeah. the right people. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, you know? You know, we can sit here and talk about it, yeah. uh, but I want to see the Serafina reincarnation myself. Saying KB was off key. She let, sound let, off me key tell you, let me tell you this. I also got stories saying that uh, um, KB was furious because there was issues with sound and whatever. I don't, I'm not seeing that. Even when I was watching at home, I didn't see that. So I thought maybe I missed it. Um, I don't know. I, that sounds okay to me. Oh, and then correct me if I'm wrong, but yes. is some music becoming the Beyonce of South Africa where oh, an dude. award <laughs> show can't happen without him on stage? <laughs> I love some easy, but uh, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else do you want to tell us about um, this? Lifetime Achievement Awards. Uh, there was a beautiful moment when Johan Stemet and uh, Umama, I forgot what her name is, Togo and Chinga were honored Ooh. for their amazing work in the industry. I thought that was uh, a poignant moment because you need to understand that for a lot of the time when we honor our legends, yeah. it's when they are not here anymore. Mm. You know, and I know what it means. I mean, having, having been around like Umam Koni, for instance, mm. uh, Koni Chuem, and hearing her say, you know what, the fact that you guys care about what I do and who I am mm. now while I'm mm. here means a lot to me. So I can imagine that moment for U U Umam Togo and uh, Mr. Stanley. Johan is the guy from North for North. North for North, uh, I think they're in their 40th season or something <laughs> like that, the longest running television show 
in South Africa. Yeah. He is one of the richest people that I know. Phil <laughs> 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 is so spicy. So listen, uh, what was your favorite Safter moment? Was it the Serafina opening that we just played for you? Was it the glitz and the glamour of the red carpet that Phil says was non-existent? Was it an acceptance speech? For instance, everyone is speaking about Lerato Kanyako and how she was quite emotional in her acceptance speech. Or was it in Laiba getting six nods of approval? Uh, tweet us or send us your WhatsApp voice note. We will continue with this SAFTA breakdown after the break. Welcome back. If you have just tuned in, I'm hanging up with the babes with entertainment, Film Pella. <laughs> and we're, of course, looking back at the biggest night of film and television in South Africa. The SAFTA is happening this past Saturday. So off the bat, yes. uh, training essay, you, you've never understood why you'd, why you'd nominate a panel. Exactly. That's what we talk about. <laughs> one person in a panel to, to, be, to win, and then she wins. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, it's very hard to talk about this win because, like, I don't want to take anything away from Upabi. Yeah. But again, like, uh, we talked about during the nominations uh, episode that we did. The fact that you will take one person from a panel, nominate them for best talk show from a panel talk show, and then she wins, like... And the fact that she was announcing herself... <laughs> I don't get that. What do you mean she announced herself? Um, she was uh, uh, the announcer at the, the awards. So she, yeah, the voiceover. So she was announcing the, 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 the nominees, and then she came because she won, and then she presented her award. That's one of the things that we forgot to talk about earlier on, about the, the thing you're going to say. They need to start inviting more people. There are lots of people in the industry to come and present. Yeah. Because you had the same people doing three or four things in the night, and we became a bit redundant. But yeah, let's move on. Okay, but congratulations to her. Congratulations to Pabi. This yes. has got nothing to do with you, Pabi. It's just, you know, the logistics of this does, does not make sense to me. All right, so easily one of the biggest awards of the yeah. night, voted for by the audience, mm -hmm. Lerato Khanyako walking away with Best TV Presenter. <sighs> oh, man, I think, you know, and I understand why this moment for her was very poignant. This is a girl who's worked very hard, if you've heard her story, she's yeah. worked very hard, and she's had it very hard in the industry as well, because yes. people have not been giving her, you know, they haven't been kind. Easy ride. They haven't been kind. I think yeah. that's actually the, yeah. the, the proper word for it. So, and her acceptance speech, like, just said it all. You can see that this girl was waiting for this moment, and it happened for her. You know, mm. I was so jealous of her acceptance speech. <laughs> it was emotional, but so composed, yeah. and she was so clear, mm. and it was, and, and the way she was clear, and it, they gave her longer, ne, to yeah. speak. Yeah, no, of course, and she, she had, she had a moment to, to, to prepare. Remember, yeah. throughout the week, it was showing that she had the most uh, uh, thingy, uh, oh. uh, vote, and it was by, like, a huge margin. So there was no way that somebody else was going to come up and, and surpass that. So I think, in a way, she, she, she prepared for it for that moment because she knew that it okay. was coming, and yeah, and she did a great job. And, you know, because she's been living in the shadow yeah. of the other it girls, now, and finally, she's yeah, got I don't think space. I don't think that in the past year, she has been living in the shadow because... Well, no, because, because, I mean, yeah, when she got to Metro, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, she hasn't been, but, I mean... Social media, I mean, like, if you want to talk about bullying in this country yeah. on social media, that girl understands what bullying is. Do you know what I mean? I mean, people could go in mm. on, on hand to see her have that moment. I mean, for me, I was touched. You know, I was like, good for I you. loved it. I yeah. absolutely, like I said, I was jealous of her speech. I was like, oh, my word, look at you so poised. Yeah. Speaking of social media bullying, yes. in my <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Um, in uh, the biggest win in terms of the film categories at uh, 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 the summer is winning, I think, about uh, what six, six. six awards yeah. and uh, best uh, uh, feature. Can I be honest? Yes. Uh, I understand that he was uh, shortlisted for the Oscars, and it, this is a very, very, very well deserved uh, uh, um, award. Award. Awards. But I think they gave it an easy run. I wish that they had uh, 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 nominated somebody else within those six, like uh, Beyond the, the River. Because what that does for the industry... But Vaya was nominated, yes, and Vaya was very Exactly, good. do you know what I mean? Because what happens is that if you just have, okay, this person has had the most buzz in the year, yeah. and you bombard them with all the awards, it loses that tension. Because we were all sitting there thinking, okay, of course I was going to win. I think it had worthy competition. Yeah. I did think that they, they were, because thespians choose yeah. who wins. Mm. And thespians were the ones who were attacked by the film board yeah. saying no to Inglaiba and taking mm. it off the movies. Yeah. So I knew that thespians were going to make a point yeah. and reward it. But isn't it nice to reward something that's no, no, worthy? It's absolutely nice. Yeah. You, you know, sometimes I have to play the devil's advocate. That's what I'm saying. That sometimes. That night when you have to say, Ngaiba, 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 it can be a bit of, oh, okay, we know it's coming, we know it's coming, we know it's, we know it's coming. But you know what? Congratulations to them. So now, 
Kane was not at the awards. He's currently in London. I believe he's just dropped his album. Uh, but he did record a little something special for the show because he was on here when he was going through hell, being bullied, getting the death threats. So he felt the need to record something for you. Hi, Anil. It's me, Nakane. If you remember me, I was in the studio a few months ago trying to explain my story. I just want to thank you so much for having my back and having me have a say when things were not easy during the film's process. I also just want to thank everyone else who supported the film. And I want to thank Saftas for the six awards they gave the film. And I want to thank Saftas for my win as well, and for, for Best Actor. It's still so surreal. Thank you so much to everyone who supported the film up until now. But wait, that is not all from this family. As soon as he was announced, naturally his mother was watching because she's right here in South Africa, and she sent him a voice note. Have a listen to this excitement. After his is too you, I'm so proud of you. You deserve this. Oh my God, that's the best year ever. <laughs> I want a mother like that. Da da you sanala. So listen, I, I want to say something very quickly about Ingleba. Thank you to South Africans because even after what happened with Ingleba, Ingleba performed very well at the yeah. box office. I mean, it was it had limited uh, uh, screens. I think the most they had was about ten when they returned, but they still kept the momentum. And if you compare it to like um, other local films that were running at the same time mm. when it returned, it was actually faring better than your you know catching Phoenix and all of that. So. Thank you, South Africa, for supporting uh, Ingleba and yeah. Uh, quickly, Tusom Bedu, nominated for an international Emmy, didn't win the Emmy, she yeah. wins the SAFTA. Yes, uh, good moment for her as well, and I heard that she finally might be getting a job, but remember, after she, no she got nominated for an Emmy, the girl complained that she hadn't worked for three months, and since then she had not even gotten work. So there's uh, the mamas in the industry that's saying that she might be joining generations. Uh -huh. Ideally, I wouldn't want her to go to soapies. I think she's above soapies now. Uh -huh. But hey, somebody uh, uh, she has to pay her thingy. Why her don't you want her to be in generations? Um, because I feel like in South Africa we need that distinction between soapy TV and like series. And, and, and you know and series. Yeah. Star you know because like. The same people that you see at, 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 in films are the same people that you see in soap. There's no distinction of... Uh, of, of, of uh, but isn't that line. an international trend? Um, not particularly. I mean, look, here's the thing. As much as you're going to see Viola Davis on TV right now, killing it and whatever, but you know that's a movie star. Meryl Streep is a movie but star. But Meryl is also doing a series. <laughs> Everyone's yes, going to no, I get that, but, but, but I, I don't know. I, 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 um, what, you think yeah. we're not that big yet? Yes, that's the thing. You know, I think I, I wish... And that's why we suffer at the box office as well. I wish we could have movie stars okay. and have these okay. award stars and then we have the soapy stars. You don't <laughs> rate soapy stars. That's your problem. You are a soapy snob. Well, fair enough. I yes. think I am. And yeah, and yeah. that has to come to an end. <laughs> but it doesn't have to happen right now. Yes, Listen, right. as always, Phil, thank you so much. You did say you're coming back for the Tanusa episode. I think yes, you, yes, you yes, might yes, be the absolutely. only guy on, uh, on the show, but hey, <laughs> I shall speak on your behalf. Listen, congratulations to all the winners of this year's Safters. We from Real Talk absolutely salute you. A special thanks to the guy who doesn't like soapies, Phil Impella, for always bringing the scoop. Speaking of scoops, tomorrow, Mini the Mini Jones will be on the show. So make sure you diarize that. After the break, however, we look at a very contentious issue. Buying property through a stock fail. Is it a good idea? What are the risks involved? And how do you know that it's not just a get-rich-quick scam? Tell your friends and family to tune in right now. And we're back. So we all know that buying property comes with all sorts of challenges. Not only is the purchase cumbersome, but it comes with extra costs, hidden costs. Then there's a deposit, then there's transfer duties, and then there's legal fees. These costs, coupled with the increasing difficulty to get a home loan, leaves a lot of South Africans without the means to own property. 
enter property stock fails. Many South Africans are now promised income wealth. Joining me right now is property investor and the founder of SA Property Stock Fell, uh, who's now able to buy and sell properties banks would not ordinarily finance through crowdfunding. We also welcome, will welcome Matimba Masinga and then joining him is the CEO of BSK Marketing and Associates, Busis Kejana, who has been working with Stockfells for over 20 years. Welcome to you, Osbusi, as well. Thank you very Good much. So, Thank Matimba, you. you said the bank didn't want to finance your fourth property. Yes. What lovely problems to have, <laughs> right? <laughs> I was trying to finance my fourth property and the banks were saying, no. So then you then decided to go the property stock fell route. Yes. Can you yes. please break it down for me? So like I said, you know, when, when I went through my fourth property, I was extremely frustrated. I was still working at that point. Uh, and then uh, I was attending a few property seminars, yeah. trying to meet like-minded people, you know. And actually I discovered that I'm not the only one, you mm. know. There are many other property investors out there who are being rejected by banks. But um, do you understand why, why, why the rejection? Were you overexposed? Of course, I was overexposed. I mean, yeah. as an uh, aspiring property investor or property trader, you know, yeah. my job at that point was to buy as many properties as possible at the most cheapest price as possible. Uh, and then at that point, I thought to myself, look, why not um, speak to other like-minded people? Yeah. Uh, that's when I started attending property uh, seminars, which were hosted all around Joburg and Pretoria. You know, I came across a lady who was as serious as I, as, as I was, you know, yeah. and uh, came across a gentleman again who was as serious as I was. Uh, we exchanged cars, exchanged numbers. A week later, we had coffee. And as they said, the rest is history. Okay, yeah. so I, I, I now want to go back to, you know, the origins of Stockfell and, you know, the person best to speak to is you, Mambusi, and mm -hmm. you have got a, a magazine here that we've got with us, a Stockfell Voice. Um, so you say there are 811,000 uh, Stockfell programs currently in the country, right? Mm -hmm. 11.4 million members and mm -hmm. an estimated 44 billion mm -hmm. in, in, in how much they're all worth. Mm -hmm. Who administers all of these? Uh, no one administ administers that except stock farms themselves yeah. in their individual groups wherever they are scattered throughout the country. But there isn't a body in South Africa that administers this in the sense that stock farms are fairly independent, yeah. you know. So they've been around for many years, like you've just said. Yeah. They've got their own constitution, they've got their own goals and objectives and all that. But there is no controlling body per se that controls and administers, you know, stock fairs as a collective. Yeah. So yeah. there's no way that one needs to register it. We can just decide we're going to do a stock fail and run with it. Definitely, it's as informal as all that, you know, but um, I'm not saying that, you know, in the future we should not look into, you know, yeah. that uh, organizational body. But stock fairs are very complex, you know. People tend to take stock fairs at face value. Yeah. Remember, this is about money. People start stock fairs for various reasons, you know, simple one, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so once you come in there and say, I want to administer you, I want to control you, you are obviously going to be looked with suspicion. What is in it mm. for us? What is it that you want from us? Is this why stock fails keep clear from banks? Because that's exactly what banks do. They, they, they obviously want to control that. Yeah, they kind of keeping clear from banks, but they still do in any way put their money, money they bend their pocket. <laughs> okay, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. explain to me then uh, the property stock fell. I, it, for me, it's extremely confusing. Who owns the house? How do I get money? You know, who... When I do get money, who puts it in my account? If you're saying so, that there's no administration. So, so for us, you know, firstly, we buy properties that are below market value. That's what we mean. You know, uh, we go to auctions, we go to distressed sellers and so on and so forth. Secondly, we open a, a, a vehicle, either a company, a PTY LTD or mm -hmm. a trust. Now we are an official body now with an official structure. We then um, agree to go on an auction or one of us goes into an auction. We buy the property in the name of the trust or in the name of the company. Once that is done, we know that we've got a some sort of a, a structure that governs um, mm. uh, the stock fell. Uh, secondly, what we do is that uh, we identify the various skills and the various expertise within the stock fell members. For instance, one of my members is, a, is an advocate, you know, mm. she's a lawyer, and she, she knows all the legal nitty gritties. She drafts the contracts for us. She drafts the contracts that manage our stock fell. Mm. Um, uh, secondly, we have a guy who's an expert in tax. You know, this is a guy who advises um, whenever we receive, we, receive, we receive rental income. Where does the rental income go? What is the tax implications mm. for that uh, 
uh, rental income. Thirdly, you've got me. I'm, I'm the property investor. I've been in the property market for a very long time. I come in and advise where are the properties that we can make profit with, where are the properties that we can flip, meaning properties that you we buy can... Buy and you, you renovate yeah, it and, and then... And sell, okay. and sell. So there are various vehicles, but... So let's say you buy, sorry to interrupt, mm -hmm. you buy, you renovate, mm -hmm. you sell, mm -hmm. and you make a profit of 200000 mm -hmm. Does that go back into the account, or do we split it amongst us? Well, it depends. It, it depends on the material conditions at that point. You know, oh. there are members who would come to say and say, "Look, I would want a hundred thousand rents from two hundred thousand. Give me twenty percent in mm. my own pocket. Let me reinvest the other the other amount." Mm. You know, the others would say, "Look, let's reinvest the entire amount. Let's go buy another, let's go buy another property, which is what we extremely encourage, so that we are able to grow the wealth." You know, so, Mambusi. From your end, do you support property stock fells? Oh, I do. I actually belong to two stock fells that are also in property. Oh, wow. Yeah. Tell us more. Yeah, geez. Uh, the one that I always brag about, I was actually invited to this stock fell. At that point in time, I knew nothing about this thing called yeah. property investment because I thought only super wealthy people yeah. you know, could invest. And a friend just said, come, join us. We're buying a, a piece of land in, in, in Hazy View, Crooker Park Lodge. Yeah. And uh, 10 years uh, down the line, we had... 10 actually, years. years? down the line, actually, actually it's almost 20 now in the that uh, we took out, a, we registered ourselves as a company because you have to be a legal entity to be able to access finance. Yes. And fortunately, unlike Matimba, we're fortunate enough, we did manage to get a bond uh, and we paid the property. I mean, we bought the property, we paid it off. It's actually in a holiday resort. It's a four-star holiday resort. Yeah. So it's paid off now. So we actually just, you know, getting passive income out of that property. Uh, yeah, the other one is me and my three friends. Yeah. We don't really call ourselves a stock fell, but the mechanics are the same. Mm. In that the three of us, we decided, oh, here's a townhouse going up for grabs. And uh, we look into our wallets. We said, okay, we are fine. And we went and bought that property. And we just, you know, uh, ripping rental out of it. Now, these are models that can actually be applied by many stock fells out there who already have cash, a lot of cash mm. that is flowing, you know. Mm. Uh, uh, amongst and them. then you add, yeah. you just buy as many properties and you add to the property De portfolio. Definitely, definitely. You can actually create, yeah, I mean, go, grow your property portfolio, you know, be it private or commercial, mm. you know. The key thing is just that you need to have that desire, you need to have that hunger, you know, to go into this property investment. And ultimately, patience as well. And patience, of course. It's yeah. not a get rich uh, yeah, kind quick, scheme. quick scheme, yeah. But what can go wrong? Thank you so much, Mambusi, for that valuable insight into Stockfells. While property Stockfell makes sense as the best investment vehicle, should you be worried? And if you are, what are you worried about? After the break, we turn, up, we turn it up a notch. Rather, we speak to a panel who seem to be divided on this issue. Uh, do send us your property Stockfell stories or your questions that you'd like answered via WhatsApp. The numbers on the screen. Come back to us. So it has been regarded as SA's hidden economy uh, that is thriving. Property stock files have taken the South African property market by storm with more and more people turning to them to get into the property market whilst avoiding the hassles of paying bonds. Is it a wealth revolution? Is it just a pyramid scheme? Joining in in the conversation is entrepreneur Cesar Lomo and back again is financial planner Gerald Mwandiambira. Mwandiambira, I always do that <laughs> for effect. Now, Matima. Yeah. What happens if it collapses and we all fight? And because you know, we get advice: don't ever buy a house with your boyfriend. If you guys are not married, don't even bother. Even if you're married, mm. try avoid it at all costs. Buying property with someone now, because things can collapse. What happens if it collapses? You sell the property, and, yeah. and, and get your money back. That's how. That's as simple as that. This is this is hoping that you sell the property at a profit. You will always sell a property at a, at a profit. I mean, property is one of those assets that escalate in value. Oh. I've never seen a property in my life that depreciates over time. You oh. know? So at best, I mean, you won't at, make a loss. At, at, at best, you're going to make uh, you're going to make uh, break even. Enter season. <laughs> my question is this now: at the point where the scheme collapses, yeah. right, and nobody is obviously servicing the debt that you've amassed, what happens? The property gets auctioned. Guys, when you auction a property, you obviously don't get market value for it. Not, not so you in, make your loss. Not, not in this current economy. Remember when you put controls and mechanisms for risk control, yeah. you're actually saying to the partners, should 
a business go down, what happens? Mm. It gets liquidated. It gets liquidated like any other business. But so then during the liquidation, uh, uh, people mm. get like 30 cents per rent. It, it's the risk that you must put as a property investor. Okay, the, it's the, the risk that you must put as a property gentlemen, investor. Gentlemen, the, the problem we have right here is that the property market in South Africa has grown by 8% in the last, in fact, it's been flat since 2008, yeah. I lie. Mm. There has been was nominal. Yeah, nominal, 8%, real terms, zero growth for the last 10 years. So. Mm -hmm. That's one problem. Mm -hmm. The other problem we do face is that uh, Stockfell is about knowing each other, Ubuntu, people yeah. getting together. Mm -hmm. and what so it's one on trust. Yes, it's, it's all about trust and relationship. Mm -hmm. And what Mambusu was talking about, you can't go into a Stockfell with strangers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you especially a property one. Especially a property, as you said. You know, getting married to someone is enough of a challenge, never mind yeah. with a bunch of strangers. So we need to be careful in that one. We need to protect the Stockfell name. Mm. Because a lot of people call themselves Stockfells, but they're not a Stockfell. If you're not on the internet talking to someone you don't know, it is not a Stockfell. Mm -hmm. They can call themselves whatever they want. And those are the, some of the things which are damaging what is something that is pure and works. On a small scale, it does work. You can yeah. buy properties. The whole group can benefit. What we're getting is that we're confusing the whole Stockfell ethos yeah. with crowdfunding and syndicated finance, that's deep stuff. He's got lawyers, he's got uh, accountants. Because once you start talking proper property in terms yeah. of the scale which is required, it's much more complex. So the first time we had this debate and this conversation, I was having it with Sizwe, and this is why I said he must also come on today. Sizwe, what are you so vehemently against when it comes to property stock sales? What are the warning flags? So you? it's exactly what Gerald has mentioned. Let me start off by saying there's a social element to this discussion, right? I cannot sit here and say I don't see the value of stock fails in general. Of course I do, right? Majority of our people are marginalized, especially in the economy. They're not able to partake in it as well as they should. And mm. that's why they come up with solutions that they come up with, such as a stock fail. Yeah. But there's a very big difference between a stock fail to buy food, a stock fail of Masnzabi Sane, for example, yeah. and now going to buy property. Masnzabi Sane, the probability of those withdrawals coming all at the same time is next to like 3%. Yeah. Not everybody's going to die at the same time there. Yeah. So the risk of you guys running illiquid is fairly low. Right? Mm. Same thing with food. You're taking advantage of economies of scale there. When you go and you buy your food in bulk at macro, for example, then there's something to be said for that. It's also short term, it's fixed. In a year, you dissolve everything and you start afresh. Mm. Once you start talking about property mm. and the way that people have been explaining it, I'm not saying what Mdimba is saying, I'm mm. not saying what Mamutu mm. is saying. The way that people are explaining it, mm. they're asking for everybody to just come in. And it's no different than a pyramid scheme at that point. Mm. If you don't mm. know what mm. N is, and by N I mean the number of mm. people that are participating in a stock fail, it's not a stock fail. If you don't know what the term is, mm. it's also not a stock fail. Mm. Because it could run over for a thousand mm. years. And then the person who's 800 on the list, for example, mm. when do they get their property? And while they're waiting, the rent that they're paying, where are they living? Because you need people with disposable income to be able to do that. And I think if you're just saying, get a house that you can live in, where am I going to get this money <laughs> while I'm waiting for the house to be built mm. and bought? And I think what Cesar is also explaining is a fundamental problem with investment in that many people go into investment without a goal. Without a you need a purpose. If you want to buy a property, how many properties, where, when do we get out? Many stockfills are just saving perpetually yeah. with no real goal. Yeah. So rule number one in the constitution of every stockfill should be set written goals that, you know, when we've achieved this, we're all out. When we're all married as single women, we are all out. Because they, now you're inviting husbands into the equation. And the moment the first person gets a divorce, you get community of property, division of assets. Now it becomes a real issue in that who owns the piece of the property. You know how we fight about Gogo's house in terms of saying that uh, there's, there's a beneficial ownership yeah. generational. It's the same thing with the Stockfeld. Okay, because Gerald once and Cizwe. Now that you guys have burst the honeymoon, can Matimba please <laughs> come no. back and say something? Okay, firstly, <laughs> one of the key fundamental principles of, us, of our stock fund, by yeah. the way, is education, you know? So we, we, we will not allow you to invest into our stock fund without having understanding mm. the property market as a whole, mm. the risks, the benefit, you know? Um, how you reach break-even mm. point, how you reach uh, uh, ROI, what, what a yield is. Return on investment. Uh, return on investment. Excuse oh, no, oh, no jargon here, no, we don't re know. Return, <laughs> return on investment. So before we even accept you to be a member of our stock yeah. firm, we, we insist that you go on a property investment course 101. So do you accept people you don't know? No, we don't. 
because I went on, on a website today for a property stock for, and yeah. there's like, there's a form there, they're asking for no. bank details no, we don't. and all of that. No, so that's not how you we, guys we, do we it. We will not accept a member who we have not screened and screened thoroughly, yeah. a member who we have not sat down with and understood his financial background, his uh, ability to understand to the property market in general and yeah. investments in, in particular, you know, because it's like investing in any other business. I would not recommend for anyone to invest in any other business yeah. without understanding yeah. it. It's taking so you money. can agree with what Tizo was saying that if you don't if you don't if there are a thousand people you're giving money that's not the one to go percent a hundred percent I, I I agree with you a hundred percent the 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 most interesting part about the stockpile is that you have to get intimate with mm. the members you have to understand their philosophy their investment philosophy mm. and what why why are they in the stock mm. you know once you understand that you are able to invest with them but most importantly running a business with anyone is about trust Mm. You know, if you are unable to trust the person that you're working with, then you might as well close shop. Mm. So in, in our stock field, we insist on a face-to-face -face interaction, first of all. Secondly... And how long, what's the screening process? Because you say you screen me vigorously. How long before so, I become one of yours? So, so, like I said, what we firstly do is that we insist that you come to our, one of our property investment courses, yeah. you know, there we take you through property stock. Field to, to, I just want to know how long is the process from when you and I meet to when I can become in the stock field? The, the process can take anything between the first month to three months. Okay. You know? All yeah. right. I just yeah. want to take an ad break. We'll be back. Listen, there's lots of maths being thrown around here and I want to do a little bit more. When we return, we crunch the numbers. Are you putting in more money than you're getting out and who stands to benefit from the property stock sales? Your voice notes are noted. They are received. They'll be played. Uh, the panel is going to answer everything for you when we come back from the ad break. So property stock sales are so popular that even the former Orlando Pirates striker Lennox Bagdela says he would like to help footballers to invest in property and will launch the property investment scheme later this year. Uh, today we've got Matimba who is part of a property stock sale. Sizu uh, is an entrepreneur and somebody who's quite learned than this and obviously our resident financial guy uh, Gerald. Gerald, when you came in here, I thought you were for stock sales, and now you sound like you're against <laughs> no, them. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm very much for stock sales. Stock sales help us to create wealth. Yeah. Every large financial institution started out as a stock fell. Okay. So, uh, so there's absolutely value in stock sales. All I want our viewers to understand is that we need to protect certain things. And the sanctity of a stock fell is that it's a group of people who know each other, and they trust each other, mm -hmm. and they build together. Okay? okay? So like-minded people my problem really is around crowdfunding and other institutions calling themselves stock fells. and that's where I jealously guard it because stock fells have created wealth for many families okay. and we need to keep it going what could go wrong by the way the concept of the stock fell is not new you know mm. I mean you've had the likes of old mutual sunlams mm. and APSA what I mean, could go wrong what could go wrong is that you could have a member who passes away without having taken proper precautions such as, such as insurance to protect other members of the stock fell so you leaving could, you exposed yes you could have a member who decides all of a sudden that they want to pull out for no reason and then that could leave you exposed as well um, you could have a member who then decides that look uh, the return on investment that he's getting is not enough, mm. you know. But always, there are always um, uh, precautions that you could put into that, you know. The what are those precautions, Cesar? Now, the precautions are, me personally, you always want to minimize your risk. Mm. So, essentially, what you're talking about in the property stock file is like chaining yourself together and then jumping overboard into a pool. You're hoping everybody can swim. The moment one person can't swim, you're all drowning. So what do I want to do? I want to swim by myself. That's why I prefer for these kind of investments to go into it by myself. Mm. I understand, though, that I'm speaking from a position of privilege because I'm mm. able to be able to do that by myself, yes. right? Uh, but even if you take a look at the numbers and you crunch them out and you go, okay, look, if you were to divide the number of, let's call it deposits, that people are putting in there, mm. and then you annuitize it and you also compare it to the returns that people are getting in there. Because even if you've got a property, let's say you're getting 10,000 rand per month from the property, it's 10,000 rand divided by N, N yes. being the number of people that are in it, right? Yeah. Eventually, you realize that if you were just saving that money by yourself, you'd be able to buy your own property interest-free in eight years. Or okay, now, now, see, so the, no, challenge no. Is, the challenge here is that people are not chaining themselves together and jumping mm. and hoping for the best. Sometimes that is how people learn. 
We must realize that. Yeah, but pro, learning pro, no. in a failed property is a very expensive lesson. No, no, no. It's an lesson. expensive yeah. lesson. It's but, a very expensive lesson. But that lesson. is how we and understand. And one that people it, who are poor can't afford. A stock is a key yes. component of financial education. Yeah. So we're not saying everyone must go into property. It's like-minded people. You must understand what you're doing because you have to be an adult making a decision. However, people learn within the stock fell. Normally, many stock fells nominate different people to learn certain topics and they educate the group. Yes, you don't want to go into an expensive property without having any experience. I mean, but me, as Sizwe is saying, he's he, my timber so we can me, for our out. auntie can put 200 rand together. You 200 for rand me. times a thousand, you can get a property with 200 rand, you'll never get onto the property ladder in any case. I mean, for me, the whole concept of the stock fell allows you to really put resources together. You might not, you might, you might not make the, the sufficient profit within the first property, but if you are able to buy the second and the third and bring long-term wealth, you will be able to split that amount accordingly. And you know, it has shown that you know you make in property you make a profit when you buy and not when you sell. Mm. It depends where you buy the property, how you buy the property. For me, for, for me, for instance, I never buy properties that are above mm. uh, market value. I always buy below market value. I go to auctions, I go to sheriff auctions, I buy distressed properties. Those are pro properties that are, are way below market value, meaning that I'm already buying a property at a profit before I even go into the market. And I think what people need to understand is that a property has two components, yeah. capital appreciation and income. Income mm -hmm. in the form of rental income. Capital appreciation is the value of the property going up over time. When you go into your property, understand which one you're targeting. You can't have both. We're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you for this. <laughs> Much like Bitcoin, I'm none the wiser. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. I get it now, I get it now. Listen, before joining a property stock fell, make sure you do your homework. Do your research, ask the tough questions. Uh, and if you feel like it's too good to be true, it probably is. Uh, thank you to our guest, Matimba Masinga, Wusis uh, Kejane, Gerald, as well as Caesar, and, Doc, and listen to me saying Dr. Phil, Phil Impella for coming through. So listen, later on this week, Tanusa Mazai Kingta, uh, she'll be celebrating her 42nd birthday at the end of the month, and she's invited all her friends and her sisters to do a woman-only gig celebrating their resilience and strength. Now, another group that does impeccable work such like this is people opposing women's abuse, and we caught up to with them, just obviously in celebration of this time to find out what it is that they're about. I've been an activist for nearly two decades. I did my training through Power People Opposing Women Abuse and now I sit as a director on the board. Abuse in our country is a serious issue and it's really sad that it's gotten to the point where we actually need to print a publication to prove to people on the atrocities and the level that abuse is. Uh, I think it's quite apt that it's raining today. Uh, number one, in, in my religion it's known as a mitzvah, which is a blessing, so it's a raining down on this publication. The weather and the rain and the, the cloudy skies represent what a lot of women go through every single day. 300 365, 365 days of the year and um, we need to highlight these issues and also understand that any form of abuse is abuse in itself and so whether it's rape, whether it's emotional abuse, whether it's financial abuse, it all needs to be put under the same light. You know, people are saying, well, uh, she got raped because of what she was wearing. She got raped because she shouldn't have been out drinking. She got raped because she couldn't keep her mouth closed. She got raped because he's a rapist. The, the sooner we start shifting the blame away from the survivors and actually onto the perpetrators, I think we'll have a more harmonious society. We also need a louder voice and stronger voice from the African male. Uh, we, we need to stop hiding behind traditional values and so-called cultural values because nowhere in any tradition does it say we're supposed to be hurting our mothers, our daughters, our grandmothers. I am a business unit director for the PR arm at Joe Public United. We've created um, a plan in order to bring awareness to the issue of domestic violence, to sexual violence. We need to look at the kind of men we are raising. We need to look at how women interact with men. We need to look at how we're raising our girls. We need to look at methods and means of empowering future generations of women. So POA has amazing um, facilities and resources and they are available. I mean, you can get in touch with them through their website. POA in itself provides counseling, they provide legal help, they provide shelter, they provide you with the resources that you need. I'm just seeing most of men are just 
abusing women. Nowadays, we say women are not free at home, even the children. Those women must depend on us. We must always protect them. From myself and the rest of the team, have yourself a lovely evening. We'll see you tomorrow evening. Mini Damini Jones will be on your screens. And we'll also be discussing if society is placing way too much pressure on women and men to get married. Right now, we didn't get to your voice notes about property stock fell. I do hope that the answers did come up in the, the debate that was happening. But if you jump onto the Facebook page, we all talk on three. Uh, the two questions will be answered. There were a lot of questions coming in. We're going to pick two. And the panel is going to carry on over there. And answer all your questions right now. Isitingo's up next. We'll check you out tomorrow. Bye-bye.